and talking about determining word meaning. So I mentioned earlier, uh, this lesson kind of takes all those smaller skills that we've learned of, you know, context clues and, um, you know, learning roots and, and prefixes and suffixes and things like that uh, to actually discover the meaning of a word. Um, so, you know, you might have trouble just using you know, the root and, and the prefix, you might have trouble just using context, but a lot of times if you put those things together, you can better get a, a grasp of that. And as I've mentioned before, um, you know, if you can look it up, look it up um, and get a definition. Uh, this really applies in particular to when you're taking your test, right? When you're not gonna be able to look at your phone to get a definition of a word uh, that you're not familiar with. Um, and, uh, you know, just help strengthen your overall understanding of the language. So let's take a look here at our lesson. Hello, this is the lesson on determining word meanings. When you read, you'll often come across words you don't know. Word form and context can help you understand the meaning of new words. It's pretty clear, words are how we communicate. If you don't understand the words, you won't get the meaning. In any area you study, like science, medicine, or law enforcement, there'll be a lot of new words to learn. That's because you'll be learning about new ideas, and you need the right words to talk about them. Recently. I've been reading about different fields of nursing to try to decide what kind of nursing job I'd like to have. I was looking through a directory of nursing topics, but it wasn't helping me very much because I didn't understand some of the terms. Geriatric nursing? What's that? Palliative care? What does that mean? Before I could move forward, I had to learn some strategies to learn new words. Here, let me show you how I deal with words I don't know. Let's take a look here. When I come across a new word, the first thing I look at is the word itself, the prefixes and suffixes. I want to break apart the word and figure out the meaning by looking at the parts. Look at this word, irreversible. That's a mouthful. But I can start to break it apart. It starts with ir. That's a prefix, a part of a word that goes at the beginning and changes the meaning. Prefixes and suffixes are usually short, and you should get familiar with the most common ones. You might know some prefixes like un, which means not, or anti, which means against. If I can't remember what ear means, I'll think of other words that start with ear, like irregular. I know that one. It means not regular. So ear probably means not. The next that's one of the things that I do most is, is think of a word that uses that same prefix or suffix. Uh, if I have a better understanding of that word, then that's going to give me a good clue. Part of the one. word is reverse. That's a word I know. It means to go backwards, like a car can go in reverse. The end of the word is a suffix, ibu. Suffixes can give you a lot of information. The suffix li tells you that a word is an adverb. Or ist means a person who does something, like a pianist plays the piano. The suffix able is like able. It means able to do something. So if I put it together, it means not able to go backwards. Irreversible. You can understand more words than you think by breaking them apart and looking at the prefixes and suffixes. The resources has a list of prefixes and suffixes that might help. Yeah, so and I've posted those uh, off and on here, uh, and I'll try to post this one again uh, for the resources on Google Classroom. And that's a good way to look at uh, prefixes and suffixes, right? So a suffix, what comes at the end, will often change the part of speech that root word comes from, which we talked about yesterday, right? So, uh, and, and the day before, or not, not yesterday, but Tuesday. Um, and so 
it may make it, uh, you know, it may take a noun and church change it to an, an adjective, right? Uh, we talked about gerund phrases, right? So ing uh, turning a verb into a, uh, a noun. So that's a lot of way, uh, a lot of times when you see a suffix, not always, right? Not not exclusively, but a lot of times it will change the part of speech that word belongs to. Prefixes tend to direct the word in a certain direction, either in opposition of or uh, you know encompassing. Uh, uh, or, you know, how widely the word uh, applies to something, right? So, uh, you know, like, and this is a perfect example. So reverse is our root word. Ear, right, is telling us that it's not, or the opposite. A lot of times that's, 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 the, the, that's the definition of, of that prefix. And ibble, as she said, right, often means it's capable of doing something. So not reversible, right? Unable to reverse. That's the idea there. Um, or no, not able to go backwards, not able to go in the other direction. Try using prefixes and suffixes to understand a word. How would you break up this word? And that's the other thing. And sometimes you might have a little difficulty and you have to understand, you know, where the prefix, the root, and the suffix, if it has both, uh, begin and end. Uh, so, and, and here's, you know, an easier word that we can, we can see where the root is um, and, and discover where the, uh, the, the suffix and the prefix belong. So displacement, right? Um, commonly, you know, we know that root is place. We can see that word that we're more familiar with, but we can also see the suffix and the and and the prefix there. So dis, right, is a common prefix that we see a lot, and mint is a common suffix. So it makes sense then that place will likely be our root word. So displacement. Great job. The prefix dis means not. The suffix meant is used for nouns and shows an action or result. The middle part of the word is place. Okay, let's go. Now on. that you've broken apart the word displacement, what does it mean? Right, so uh, if something has been displaced, right, or displacement, you are um, moving something away. From its place, right? So the displacement of uh, the displacement of people. That's a lot of times where you'll hear it, like uh, either forced migration or immigration. So when we talked about the slave trade in, in social studies, right? The Atlantic slave trade was the displacement of of um, Africans uh, to the New World. So you know, it was a forced displacement, obviously, but uh, you have that in, in other ways. So that's a, probably a really good uh, sort of use of that word, the displacement of people wherever, you know, because of whatever crisis or, or emergency or, or forced nature of it. Great job. The prefix dis means not. The suffix meant is used for nouns and shows an action or a result. Displacement means the action of moving something so that it's not in its place. Okay, let's go on here. When I read a new word, I always look at the context. Context means everything that surrounds something. To look at the context of a word, look at the sentence and the paragraph, and even the whole text to see if you can understand the meaning. Take a look at this sentence. Dementia, arthritis, and falls are some of the special problems in geriatric nursing. When I wanted to understand what geriatric meant, I looked at this sentence. It gives me some clues. Geriatric nursing deals with dementia, arthritis, and falls. You might realize that those are common problems in seniors. The next sentence reads, 
Older patients also often deal with emotionally difficult problems, like losing their eyesight and being unable to drive. Ah, the term older patients really confirms what I was already thinking. Geriatric must mean dealing with older people. You can look for several types of context clues, a definition, restatement, or synonym, an example like dementia arthritis and falls, a comparison to something similar or different, or a cause and effect relationship. Context clues can be very helpful when you're trying to understand important words. I bet you'll find that they help you a lot. Yeah, that's a, and that's a, a good example. Um, and you'll see again, so the root word there, I remember sort of learning, you know, if whatever age I was, you know, what geriatric medicine was, like it's talking about here. So geriatric nursing, you know, caring for uh, elderly patients, right? Uh, geriatric medicine uh, deals with, you know, the elderly, right? The, the, the care and, and longevity of, of, of elderly patients and the problems that they tend to have specifically. Uh, and whenever I, you know, understood that, I remember immediately there is a, a, a dietary supplement and, and a line of vitamins called Geritol. And I think it's still around. It was always popular like in the 80s. Uh, and we used to make jokes about, uh, you know, when, when somebody got, you know, into their, their 40s or something, you know, don't break a hip and make sure to take your Geritol. Uh, and that, that light bulb went off in my head. Said, oh, Geritol, geriatrics, there's the root word. You know, anytime you hear that G-E-R, uh, we're dealing with something that tends to deal with aging. Um, but again, context clues, really important. So just like she mentioned here, um, you know, there's not a real strong sense of a, a root word. Now, there is the IC at the end that's a suffix um, or trick. Actually, I think the TRIC would be considered the, 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 the suffix there, which tends to relate to uh, medical practices, right? And, and, and nursing and things like that. Um, but, you know, you see those words, you know, dementia, arthritis, and falls are some of the special problems in geriatric nursing. So, well, we're all familiar with nursing. Uh, you know, whatever, you know, form it is, we, we sort of have a pretty good understanding of what that job entails, you know, what, what industry it works in and things like that. But geriatrics, maybe not so much. Our clues there, dementia, arthritis, and falls. Um, I, I think I suffer for maybe two of those three already, um, the arthritis and falls maybe, uh, but, or I don't know, you guys know me long enough, maybe dementia too. But uh, you could see there, right? Well, who, what, what segment of the population, what, what segment of people that would require nursing care would that mostly affect, right? So dementia, arthritis, and falls, that sounds like something, you know, that the elderly tend to have an issue with. So geriatric nursing deals with the elderly. Try using context to understand a new word. Based on the context of this sentence, what does palliative mean? Palliative. So for cancer patients, palliative care treats pain, depression, nausea, and, uncom and other uncomfortable symptoms. So based on our context there, uh, we know that it's about um, relieving symptoms of a cancer patient, right? So it doesn't say, you know, um, oncology, right, is the, um, is the uh, treatment of cancer. That is, the, that is the field of medicine that studies and treats cancer, um, <laughs> which would be, you know, if this was something about oncology, it would say something more about uh, treating the actual illness. But here, we just have symptoms that are often caused from medication or a, a, a cancer diagnosis and, 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 and the issues around that. So palliative care is about relieving symptoms, right? improving the quality of life for a cancer patient. Great job. In cancer, pain, depression, and nausea are symptoms, not the root cause. Since palliative care treats these symptoms in a cancer patient, you can say in general that palliative care relieves symptoms. And I've actually, that, that I learned through this lesson. Um, I've heard that term before. Um, I you know, don't really, uh, fortunately, had a lot of uh, cancer uh, um, 
or well, it, it's it's not very common in my family. Um, and it's not a term that I was at all familiar with. I have heard it from time to time, but I did not know what it was. And it was actually, for me, going through the context here actually told me, okay, palliative care is relieving symptoms. I don't know if it's just for cancer, if it applies to other sort of long-term illnesses uh, and severe illness, but uh, palliative care is about relieving symptoms. Now, there are a couple more things to think about when you're trying to understand new words. One is connotation. Words have meanings, but they also are associated with feelings or ideas. Think about the words childish and youthful. They both mean like a young person, but they have different connotations. You can often figure out connotations from context. Someone might say, Josh is so childish, he has temper tantrums over nothing. The context shows that Josh is like a child in a bad way. He has temper tantrums. On the other hand, someone might say, Josh looks so youthful now that he's lost weight and cut his hair. The context seems to use youthful in a good way. Josh looks good now that he's lost weight and cut his hair. Something related to connotations is figurative language. That's when you use words in ways that aren't literal. Like you might call a car your wheels. Wheels aren't literally a car. They're just part of a car. But you can use the word wheels to mean car. You can often understand figurative language like this from context. For example, you might read, Josh asked, how do you like my new wheels? He proudly pointed to the red Mustang in the driveway. You can tell by the fact that Josh is pointing to a red Mustang that he means car when he says wheels. If you give it a little bit of thought, you'll be able to figure out a lot of connotative and figurative meanings from the context. Connotation is really important to above and beyond learning, you know, uh, a definition for a word. Uh, it, it's going to apply right where, where she said figurative language. So this will help you understand uh, in, in, in literary works, right? We, we dealt with figurative language before. Um, or when it comes to evaluating what you're reading in terms of, of evidence or, uh, you know, the claims somebody's making, you know, the connotation, just like that. We talked about loaded language or, or, or the use of certain words and word choice. So just like that, you know, this person talking about, what was his name, Josh? Yeah, uh, you can get a real sense of the uh, of the way somebody thinks about somebody by the way they're speaking about them or an event, a, 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 an issue. Uh, so this person saying this about Josh, Josh is so childish. Uh, you can you could start to, you know, see their viewpoint on this particular person, the point of view that they're taking about this person. So above and beyond, you know, just learning definitions of word connotation, really important to reading a situation. Okay. Choose the two best figurative, connotative, or literal meanings of the highlighted word in the sentence. Yes. Okay. So here is a good example, right? So we're talking about really getting into figurative language. Uh, if somebody says, Jane is my heart, I want to marry her. Right. Well, it's not their physical heart. Um, uh, well, it is a thing we need to, to live and the thing that pumps our blood in this case. Right. We also know, uh, you know, the whole idea behind what a heart symbolizes. Right. It symbolizes love. I also want to point out the use of their semicolon here. Right. They're, they have two depend, independent clauses that they've connected with the semicolon. Jane is my heart semicolon, I want to marry her. Um, but yes, so here, heart means love, right? It's not uh, the thing pumping your blood. Uh, it is not a red suit in a deck of cards or the thing that you need to live. Uh, you know, it is Excellent. Love. love is a figurative meaning of heart in this sentence. This meaning makes sense because the speaker wants to marry Jane and because a heart is associated with love. Okay, so let's take a look. We got our practice questions now. Very good work on those exercises. Our infamous eight questions as always. So uh, you guys take about 10 minutes to work your way through using context clues, <laughs> using roots, using affixes, 
Uh, and we will check our answers here at about eh, 153-ish or so. So go ahead and work on that for a few minutes. Sorry, Mr. Mark, I'm all right. Which one are we doing now? I can't hear you. You are mute. Sorry about that. Um, it's determining word meanings. I'm so rarely muted that I always forget if I do put on mute. Um, it's determining word meanings. It's an RLA reading and it should be assigned for you guys. Okay, thank you. No problem.
All right, we're going to go ahead and get set up here. And yeah, it's about time. Um, so I'm not on mute again, am I? Okay, no. Um, so our first question here, based on the parts of the word of the word re-employment, what does it mean? So, um, you know, employ is our root word there, um, and re also means a reversal or an uh, uh, an addition um, or a continuation. Uh, and mint is making that into uh, a, uh, a a noun, basically. So um, in this case, it's being hired again for a job, right? So being re-employed. Um, so the act of being hired again for a job. So the suffix mint shows that the word is a noun. Right, employ is a verb. If I employ you, um, then you know that's the action of me hiring you for a job. Uh, and mint is going to change that into an act or state. Remember, right? With suffixes, a lot of times it's going to change the part of speech that that word appears in. So let's keep going here. <coughs> the eye-catching green dress looked stunning on her. So using figurative connotative or literal meanings, right? So what does that mean? We're not literally being stunned, right? I'm not gonna be incapable of moving, right? Nobody hit me with a, a stun gun or a taser uh, when, when I saw this dress, right? So what does that mean then? So it's affecting to the viewer, right? There's a sense of awe uh, in seeing this. So it is affecting the viewer. Wait, there, I remember seeing this now, for some reason, some of these, there are two answers. So, and if you check, if you click on very beautiful, it's going to give you a wrong answer as well. I forgot all about this. Um, so it, the answer can be either very beautiful. Oh, it drives me crazy. Uh, or affecting to the viewer. I remember there's a couple of these in here. So uh, sorry about that. Yeah, if you put very beautiful or affecting to the viewer, that is the correct answer. They screwed up and they put two correct answers in here. So if you click on any of them, none of them are going to give you a right answer. Sorry about that. It's just uh, they, they blew it on their end. This one, another context clue. So based on the yeah. context. Yeah. I choose the very beautiful bed. It says wrong. So I was like, okay, you why? know, I, and I apologize. I should have mentioned that because I, I knew that was gonna happen. Um, so but yeah, and there's a there's a there's two or three more, I think, in here that do that. So uh when we get to those, you'll see. I think they're right at the end. But yeah, so if you put very beautiful or uh, uh affecting the viewer, either one of those are correct which kind of makes it difficult, <laughs> but, um, and that's of course why I, you know, I don't know. I think I'm going to, I'm going to contact them about this lesson and let them know that they have three questions in here that give you no right answers because you have two right answers among the four choices. Uh, but moving forward here. So inkling, you know, based on the, on the context here, what does that mean? I didn't have an inkling about the surprise ending before the last 15 minutes of the movie. So a hint or a clue is what an inkling means. And that one definitely gives us a right answer. Very good. Okay, you got we'll keep going here. So based on the parts of the word immobile, what does it mean? So mobile, right, means to be able to move around. M. I am uh, means, uh, you know, not or uh, incapable. So that is a uh, not moving, right? If something is immobile, it means it is not moving or incapable of moving. Okay. 
and then listless. So she was listless, hardly moving at all, and not saying a word. So listless is one that you might not see very often. So that is uh, lacking energy, right? And your context clue there is saying uh, hardly moving at all and not saying a word. So with that as a context clue, right? Listless must mean maybe tired or, you know, lacking energy. Oh, don't click that one, click that one. All right. Okay. It's also confusing. It has like two or three answers. Right, yeah, and it, it's, um, so like this one, this is one of those that's gonna give us a wrong answer no matter what you pick. Um, because there's two right answers here. Um, and, you know, this is this is just a glitch. It this gives you wrong. It doesn't matter which one you pick. Right. Yeah, it's, it's wrong. Yeah, because it's, 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 they messed up because they gave us two possible answers that are correct, right? So if you look at that, you say the house was an oven after the air conditioner went out, you know, what's your first guess going to be, right? Probably a hot place. Yes, right? yeah. Yeah, so it's either a hot place or an uncomfortable place. Yes. But they've messed up this this uh, um, particular you know uh, quiz. So if you if you put a hot place or a comfortable place or an uncomfortable place, both of those are right. Okay, um, just so you know. What what was that? When we put. And uncomfortable place, it will say incorrect. Too. Yeah, yeah. Either one of those will give you an incorrect answer. It's... You can click like both answers. Mm -hmm. We can click both answer at a time. Yes, we do. Wait, oh. can you click, click both of them? Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah, me too. Does it? Okay, I, you know that that. That bugs me. That really bugs me because it doesn't it doesn't indicate that you should pick more than one answer. Oh. The question says that it's, it could be have like two answers. Man, so they don't they don't tell you that anywhere. Say you know pick the best two answers. There's no you know it just says based on the context what does the pretext mean? You know uh, like okay we'll do it for the last one here. Um, so. This one, um, pretext means excuse or false reason, okay? Oh, that makes me mad. Oh, it does say two. Does it say two for the other ones? False reason. Does it say two for the other ones? Yes. Okay, so that's on me. I, I mentioned dementia earlier. Um, okay, so never mind, never mind. Um, I was wondering why it was kept giving me wrong answers. Okay, so in this case, right, cheap means low quality and inexpensive. Oh, okay. Okay, that's on me. No, so you can pick two answers in those. Okay. I wasn't paying attention. I've told you about this before, and this is a good example of me not following my own advice to read the question well. Um, that's a perfect example of me not following my own advice and not reading the question well, because it said pick the best two answers. And I wasn't paying attention. So did you learn a little bit about dealing with new words? I learned a lot about Studying dealing nursing, with directions. I'm realizing that there's so um, much vocabulary to learn. I bet it's like that in any field. You learn new concepts. So I just want to go back real quick and just to... Um, just to make sure we're all clear. And I'm going to start with question two. Hello, this is the lesson on determining word meanings. Okay, so yeah, it says choose the best two figurative, connotative, or literal meanings of the highlighted word. I completely overlooked that. So yeah, uh, you can click on uh, very beautiful and affecting to the viewer. Yeah. Um, and then I'll just go ahead and skip to what was the next one like that? Was it 
um, six, right? Yeah, so the house was an oven, which is a hot place and an uncomfortable place. So three was a hint or clue. So there's just the one answer there, a hint or clue. And then, yeah, so then that's right. And then we can jump to eight again, just to make sure. And yeah, that was just totally on me. I thought it was the, that they had messed up. And okay, so um, of course you can always go back and repeat those lessons. Um, let me, 